So you're ready to ask your boss for a raise and cue the stress. But good news, everybody, asking for a raise doesn't have to be so stressful. In fact, talking salary with your employer is way more common than you probably realize. I'm Sinead and I get it. Talking salary with your boss takes a whole lot of courage. So in this video, we are guiding you through how to confidently ask for a raise in six steps. We're making sure you have the tools to present a strong case, sharing tips on how to prepare for the discussion and giving insight into what to do if your manager says no. Successfully navigating a talk about your salary or a potential increase is a big win for everybody. Not only do you feel valued, but your employer gets to enjoy the benefits of a satisfied and committed employee. And yes, there are so many great ways to approach the discussion about your salary. But of course, there are definite situations that you do not want to ask for a raise. So be sure to stay tuned to avoid that pitfall. All right, let's get started with step number one. Know when the time is right. Ask yourself, am I due for a raise? Sometimes you may know the answer to that question right away. But just in case you're not completely sure, Consider the following circumstances that will help you decide whether or not it's a good time to talk salary. It's been more than a year since your salary was last reviewed. Your workload has noticeably increased for at least the past six months. You have an upcoming performance evaluation and or you've been offered another job. Now, before we explore these circumstances just a little bit more, a quick warning about that last one, being offered another job. This is one of those tricky situations that can potentially end poorly. If you are currently in this situation, stick around because we will give you insight on how to handle it. For now, let's talk about timing because, oh yeah, timing matters. Your timing when asking for a raise can make all the difference. First, think of the big picture. Be smart, consider it, and ensure that, one, the company isn't facing major hardships. If you've survived a round of recent layoffs, it's wise to lay off asking for a raise. No matter how well-deserved, layoffs likely mean the company simply does not have the means to give you what you need. Two, there are no significant market trends or current events that could negatively impact your industry. The people who make the financial decisions have to think about the entire company, not just your position. So an example of bad timing along these lines would be asking for a raise during a housing crisis when you work in construction, finance, or real estate. Just be thoughtful and considerate. On an individual level, consider you and your bosses day to day. First, has your job changed or have your responsibilities increased since your salary was last reviewed? Second, have you been asked to take on new tasks at work that have caused personal difficulties like increased travel demands or a newly complicated commute? Next, have you done a great job on something recently? If the answer is yes, it might be a great time to shine some light on your above and beyond achievements. And finally, not only does general timing matter, but specific timing matters too. Down to the day you choose to approach the topic of a raise. It's not a good idea to corner your boss on a Friday night or 30 minutes before the end of the workday. And yes, specific timing also matters over Zoom. So take the time to consider what day is best and always schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting in advance. There are other no-nos when it comes to asking for a salary increase. So for tips on what to avoid when negotiating your salary, check out this video right here. Now about that ask, be specific and base the number on research. Step two, identify your number. It's common to enter a salary discussion without an explicit figure in mind, let alone a number based on solid research. So to avoid this potential pitfall, prepare ahead of the meeting. One, ask for a specific dollar amount or percentage. A common adjustment is in the three to 5% range. Now that doesn't always mean you shouldn't ask for more, but it's important to keep it reasonable. Two, research the market in multiple ways, including reviewing salary websites that provide broad data. Keep an open mind while on the web because titles, locations, and of course qualifications do vary widely, but the internet is a great place to start. And be sure to check out Indeed Salaries to see what other people in your role and location are making on average. You can often get really good info by simply talking to recruiters and by researching similar jobs and their salary ranges. Some companies are transparent about their salary bands, so take your time doing that research and take note if you currently sit below or on the low end of the range for your role. 
Salary bans are restrictive, but it's important to know where you sit to make a strong case for an increase. Talk to your colleagues, get some insight from your coworkers into how your company usually approaches salary increases. That way you can calibrate your hopes and have an idea of the parameters. Ask others in relevant industry groups or check with professional organizations in your field. There's so much great information out there. And as you're doing the research, simply look for patterns and trends and not necessarily exact figures because all situations vary. Now, before I move on, if you've watched this far, give us a like, hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell to get our latest career advice. The next step is to prepare your case. Why do you deserve more money? Step three, identify your why. When you ask for a raise, you'll need to explain why you've earned it. This is the most important step. So ask yourself, one, what positive feedback have I received? Two, what recent results am I most proud of? Three, where have I taken initiative? Four, where have I made the biggest impact? And you definitely wanna quantify your results. You probably don't need to walk in with graphs and slides necessarily, but you should always be prepared to make a great case. And most of the time you can do that in a fairly easy going way. The conversation might begin with, I'm grateful for the challenges and responsibilities I have taken on over the last year and a half. I have consistently exceeded my goals and I'd like to talk about adjusting my salary to reflect this higher level of contribution. Now, if your organization is more data-driven, that same discussion should include more data and KPIs or key performance indicators. For example, this conversation may sound similar to, since my last raise over a year ago, I've taken on many additional responsibilities. I'm now overseeing our five junior level employees. And as you mentioned last week, our results in that area have increased by almost 10% in the last quarter. I've addressed concerns we've had about procurements, relations with vendors, reducing P&L costs in the last quarter. Finally, with accounts receivable, our late payments are down by 40%. Can we discuss adjusting my salary to a level that reflects this new work? Even if your work feels less quantifiable, you should still factualize your case using numbers. And we actually have a great video on that right here. But think about if you were a nurse, you could analyze the overall hospital's numbers and apply those to your own department. For example, since my last performance evaluation, our unit has consistently handled higher case count without adding any staff members. Our capacity has expanded since we took over that extra wing of the hospital, and my patient care surveys have higher satisfaction ratings than average. Are you open to reevaluating my compensation given the increased workload while still exceeding our service level goals? Pay attention to some of the nuances in these verbal examples. Refer to work you've already done, not work you're promising for the future. Very important. Communicate your confidence with strong words that assume cooperation. Make a case based on the value you bring, not your personal situation. Although your twins may need braces, this should not be the reasoning behind why you need a raise. So now that we've discussed how to work through your why you deserve a raise, let's take a step back and put ourselves in our boss's shoes. Step four, consider what your manager may be thinking. Most managers want to hold on to great employees. And if you follow the advice that we're sharing, your manager isn't likely to be thinking, wow, what nerve. Most often they'll be thinking, how big of a raise does this person deserve? Managers have the responsibility to understand how valuable you are to the company, not just how well-liked you are. Do I have money to say yes to this request? Your manager might want to give you a raise, but not have the money in their budget. In larger companies, there may be salary bans for exactly this purpose, and going outside the range can be difficult. What would this mean for other people's salaries? Your manager has to consider all others in similar levels when negotiating with one individual. Is this a reasonable salary overall? Yes, it is possible to ask for too much. If you ask for something absurdly high, like doubling your salary, it's likely to look naive and maybe even a bit egotistical. So absolutely know your worth, yes, but also be humble. Finally, am I worried about losing this person? The subtext to a request for a raise is always, I might go somewhere else if you say no. And managers will be way more willing to go out of their way to negotiate a raise than risk losing a fantastic teammate. Managers want to keep worthy employees. And besides, it's 
perfectly natural to ask for a raise. We have a video on how to ask for more right here. But if your request is reasonable and backed up by your value, a good manager isn't going to respond critically, though they might not be able to say yes, which brings us to step number five. Prepare for no. Oh yes, this one hurts just a little bit, even thinking about it. But if your boss does turn you down, don't sulk. Embody that professional grace you have and ask your manager or your boss what you could do to earn an increase in the future. A supportive boss will be able to tell you what you need to do in order to earn that raise. Now, what if you've been turned down, but you desperately need a raise? What are you supposed to do then? That leads us to step six. Know when to put yourself back on the market. When you've been with a company for so long and the timing is just right, asking for a raise makes sense. It's important for you to ensure that you are compensated appropriately for what you bring to the company. However, some companies aren't in the habit of evaluating salaries all that often, or as we've learned, may not have the means to increase your pay right away. So if you get turned down, but are still in need of a bigger paycheck, put yourself back on the market. See how your resume performs and learn if you can attract the right employer to your desired compensation. You never know what opportunities are out there until you look. Now, always keep in mind that looking for a new job might lead to a new job. And yes, of course, that's great. But that also means a new company or employer. So take your time determining how much of a salary increase you need and the associated responsibilities, because those will be new too. Higher pay means the company is making a bigger investment in you. So make sure you are up for the challenge. It's common for people to fear the worst, but if you've taken the steps to self-evaluate your performance and believe that the timing is right, build up the courage to ask for a raise. Remember the key steps. One, get the timing right. Two, identify your number. Three, prepare your case by identifying your why. Four, understand what your boss is thinking. Five, be prepared for a no. And six, know when to put yourself back on the market. If you follow these guidelines on when and how to ask for a raise, you have the best chance of earning what you feel you deserve. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button right down below so that we know it's helpful to you. And then subscribe to our channel right over here for weekly career advice. And there's no need to wait because you can check out this playlist right here. And for more tips on what to say when negotiating your salary, check out this video right down here. I'm Sinead, best of luck to all of you, and I'll see you next time.